As per classic Yu-Gi-Oh thing, the text is unfriendly to people who have bad eyesight. <laughs> Right, Carl, do you know why we're here today? You told me to bring this card. Yes, I did. So for those of you who are fans of the channel, we did another video like this where I got one of our resident Magic players, Yaman, to come in and review a Yu-Gi-Oh carriage that has been deemed problematic by the community. It's a great player um, to choose. And Yaman and me had a quick discussion about that, and I said, you know what, we'll do it again, try it, because you guys like that video a lot. And if you guys do like these videos, like, comment, subscribe, ding the notification bell, as it makes us happy, and also uh, keeps us stable in our jobs. It helps us grow the channel. So I assume from what you just said, that this card is a problem. Yeah. I am holding a problem. You are holding a problem card. Ooh, it's shiny. It's called Imperial Order. I've never mm. heard of Imperial Order okay. yet, but it is a trap card. Mm -hmm. um, as per classic Yu-Gi-Oh thing, the text is unfriendly to yeah. people with bad eyesight. <laughs> Uh, negate all spell effects on the field. Once per turn, during the standby phase, you must pay 700 life points. This is not optional. I love how they point that out. Um, or this card is destroyed. Was there a version of the card before that didn't have this is not optional? You are correct. And this card was eroded from a previous version. Who who did it? Who's the, who's the culprit? So, as in like we changed the Konami. The, oh, I thought there was one person who like no, famously... No, no, no. Oh, so this card was... Eroded because beforehand it used to say you can choose to pay 700 life points. Or oh, this card is this that's just poor templating, right? Mm. That's not. No. They didn't they, do that purposely. They did that purposely. That was on purpose. You can choose to pay 700 life points, or this card is destroyed. Okay. What, what, what's the purpose of this text? So the premise of this text is basically, because it's a trap, do you know how traps work in Yu-Gi-Oh? You set them down face down, or face yeah. up some um, Face down for traps, yeah, usually. And then when they play something that's activated by this, you go, ha ha, I gotcha. So kind of, so it's kind of like, I guess you guys have spell speeds, kind of, I don't know what you call them, magic. Sorcery, yeah, 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 sure. But the point of this card is that it's a trap, so it's spell speed too, so you can activate this in response to something. Say if your opponent was like, okay, my game plan is I'm gonna use a spell to search a creature, and then I pop off from there. You can wait until your opponent plays that spell. You can then respond with Imperial Order. And then the way chains work is you build up, 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 and then you resolve backwards. And the last thing that is declared is the first thing to happen. So if your opponent goes, I play a spell, it's gonna search my deck for this and start my whole combo off. You can go, okay, respond with Imperial Order, chain resolves, Imperial Order kicks in, and then your opponent's spell effect would try and trigger but then fizzle and have no effect because of Imperial Order. So it's like a counter spell. Kind of, but this is permanent. It stays on the field because it's a continuous trap. Oh! Okay, I think I see it now. <laughs> yeah. So if I understood after I've activated this, yeah. is it just for the turn? It stays there until you can no longer pay the maintenance cost of 700 life points. And how much do you start again? game? 8,000. So this is how many turns do you get to last on average? Usually I three. So paying uh, a music two thousand hundred is not a big deal to just completely prevent your opponent from activating. So that's the thing. Is this legal? This card was banned in January, I believe. Good, good riddance. It used to be at one, but then it was banned in January. This is the only card ever in Yu-Gi-Oh's existence to receive an errata, come back and be legal to play, and then get banned again <laughs> because the errata wasn't under. enough. Before the errata, this card was insane. It was broken. Like, it was even worse than it is now because it used to say, you can choose to pay this maintenance cost. So what you could do is you could set up a board, set imperial order, your opponent goes to their turn. Most of your board is monsters. You're probably not gonna play too many spells if you're running this, but what you can do then is flip imperial order on your opponent's turn and go, I'm gonna pay my 700. Take 700 damage, sure, but no spells are negated on the field. So your opponent can't play spells. A lot of kind of like board breakers or spells. So as a result, if your opponent's got second, they're trying to jam a board breaker. It, it's not going to work because they are stopped by Imperial Order. Mm -hmm. And then because you could choose to pay the maintenance you cost, could die. you could let it go. And then you could use your powerful spells to start doing things again. So, and then what went wrong? And why, why they, didn't they They banned work? it because it was exceptionally powerful. It was really toxic as well. It feels because very, like it, it feels toxic. It, it basically like, says like you, one third of the cards in the game just don't work anymore. Which is... If you really, build your deck around having this, yeah. I can understand how this is... But even then, you, you, you break didn't the have quality to. Of was the the thing. You didn't even have to build your deck around it because you could just set it and then activate your pawn's turn mm -hmm. and then choose to let it go. So Konami were like, okay, what we'll do is we'll errata the card. We'll change its text so that way it no longer is optional. You have to pay you, the 700. You have to pay the 700 life until you can no longer pay it anymore. And as a result, you now can no longer use spells. So it was a little bit more fair, but <laughs> it still stops and shuts down one third of the game's mechanics. 
and that is always a very dangerous card to be printed. This card came out in like one of the really early sets of Yu-Gi-Oh! And this happened actually quite a lot where a lot of cards, not monsters necessarily, but spells and traps that were printed in the early days of Yu-Gi-Oh! have aged really well, like the finest wine. In Magic, you have a lot of cards mm -hmm. that are a parry. They yeah. do the same thing for everyone. Everyone sacrifices a creature. Sure. Everyone has to untap only one land yeah, yeah. stuff like that. And those are always broken because you play them in decks that are built in a certain way so that the parity affects your opponent mm -hmm. more so than you. So if, if this was a magic card that, for example, said players cannot play non-creature spells, mm -hmm. you would play this and a bunch of creatures, and then your opponent wouldn't be able to play those spells, but haha, you get to play your whole deck. Is this something you, your players can do? Yeah, you can absolutely build around this. A deck that was running this card to full advantage almost was a deck called Sword Soul. You guys big on the alliteration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. It's these dragon worms that are named after ancient Chinese swords. Really cool archetype, and they're all based around summoning monsters out of the extra deck uh, using cards that are basically one card starters. So you play a card, you get an extra card, you get an extra token that happens to allow you to facilitate the summon, you do it, whatever. The deck really only had three spells that they needed, which was a searcher for one of the monsters in their deck that you would play on your first turn before this ever would matter. So what you would do is you'd play the game, and if you drew this, you basically won. Because all of the board breakers, all of the very powerful removal tools are usually spell cards. Mm, so you play this and then they couldn't interact with it because they can't play their own spells. They can't play their own spells and they'd have to use a monster effect, but you probably negate those monster effects because you've got a board full of monsters. You're not under the restriction of Imperial Order because you're probably not playing spells mm -hmm. except for cards that you would use in your first turn before this becomes relevant. And the paying 700 life points is so silly. This would have to have a ridiculous amount of like, if it said, each turn pay like 4,000 life points, it would still probably be too good because yeah, like- you just need one turn. Yeah, you just need it's one turn. Like, and but then yeah, it's just, it's 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 insane. How how much of a metagame show does this have? How how rampant is it running? Well, not anymore because it's dead. Oh, so they, they, they started banning it they were like, January. We, they, yeah, yeah, January they banned it. They were like, we can't let this card be in the game anymore because it's just- And you could only have one of them. You could only have so. one. And that's, it led to this really weird annoying thing of where like, if you were going first and you set a card, it was like, if that's Imperial Order, you just won the game. Because what were you supposed to do? You can't, yeah, yeah. Is it easier to tutor up? Unfortunately, not. Okay, so, so it's you hard had, to get There's to. no mulligans in Yu-Gi-Oh, if I understood, no, right? Yeah, yeah. So you, it was, you cross your fingers that you got this in your opening hand. That's, it was basically cross your fingers that they don't have it in their opening mm. hand, because you don't want to go up against it. And it made the game feel really sacky, where it was like, oh, they better not draw the one of that literally just wins them the game. Imagine you're just running hot at a tournament, you're like, yeah. that's the thing. 6 0, and then you, you go against two people who top deck Imperial and Order, and you're like, ah. And sure, there are probably ways that you could search it, and there's a couple of other, like, it's really weird because there was a card called Red Reboot, which is another. Track. Once again, great alliterations yeah, yeah, yeah. in Yu Gi Oh! It's a card that allows you to, from your hand, uh, pay half your life points to negate a trap that is activated and your opponent can't activate traps for the rest of the turn. So really, really powerful. But like, it's another one of those cards that feels sacky because it was a one of. So you had to draw your one of of your one of to then negate the one of it. Yeah. It's funny because it's a great example of once again, how beginner players will look at this mm -hmm. 700 or half your life. So what in your head, yeah. pay half your life. So they're looking at this. What 700 life for a turn? I can't play this. Yeah. This kills me. This is bad. And I can't activate my own spells. This but sucks. And your it's life like, is the easiest resource to use. It really is. It's like at the end. You have it, more life than you have cards. It's about the only resource we really have in Yu-Gi-Oh! Except for like card advantage mm -hmm. uh, is paying your life. and. There's a lot of decks that utilize it to a very high degree. Um, it is funny though, because if you have exactly 700 life points and this card's on the field, you do lose the game because you can, you have to pay for it if you can. So you pay for it and then you're on zero life points, so you lose. So you could kill yourself with this does very- it, Does that happen often? No, never. Yeah. Like, spells are usually extenders to get you things you need or board breakers. And in a lot of cases in your side deck specifically, so going game two and three, side deck cards for spell and trap removal are all spells. Mm. So this kind of just stopped opponent's whole like siding process if they went, I'm gonna put in Dark Ruler no more, and negates all monster effects. I'm gonna put in Lightning Storm, which destroys either all monsters on the field that aren't in defense position, or all spells and traps. I'm gonna put in Twin Twisters, I'm gonna put in Cosmic Cyclone. All spells that are designed to remove problematic cards your opponent has put up, and then you just chain Imperial Order, yeah. and yeah. they just don't do anything. Anymore. I have a question for you, this yeah. is clearly a feel bad. Yeah. They can't unbend this the way it is. What would you change about it? 
to make this not toxic? It's so hard because a lot of people say up the life point cost, but we've kind of you from, three this, turns in from this discussion, you we've we've kind of come to the conclusion that like you can't do that because if you were to up the life point cost, what what arbitrary number makes this carriage like good? If you said pay seven thousand life points, like arbitrary costs, like pay seven thousand life points to stop your opponent from activating spells per turn. It doesn't matter, you win the next turn. Yeah. You know, pay 4,000. See, that's kind of interesting because it means that if you activate it on your opponent's turn, you pay the 4,000 and then you go to your turn, you pay the 4,000 because you have to, because you can, because you have 4,000 left and you die. So you'd have to have find a way to remove it, but then that just makes the card kind of almost too unusable. I just think that there's a lot of cards that are designed like this where they stop you from doing certain mechanics in the game that are just should never be allowed because it just removes an entire third of the game. As a Magic player, I want to know, is there any kind of similarity card to this where it just says, hey, you know uh, creatures? Yeah, you can't play them. Oh, hey, you know artifacts? Nope, not able to be played. And how much of a problem those are? There's so w one of the closest ones I can find mm -hmm. um, is because they, they don't really usually bat a whole type. Sure. Some certain spell will have protection from all types. But there, there's one that is was close to being battable, but the metagame changed. Sure. Uh, called Chalice of the Void. Okay. So it costs XX, just two, two oh, X. Oh, and you can pay as much as you want, right? You can pay as much yeah. as you want. It's an artifact. So you could, you could pay zero, for example. Okay. And then, uh, but then it would come with zero counters. If you pay two, it's one counter. If you pay four, it's two counters. And then you just counter any spell with that mana cost. That's from either either side. That's kind of nutty. But the decks that would play it yeah. are control decks that would have nothing that costs one or zero. Yeah. And then they would again spell decks that have either their win condition costs zero. They would just play this on zero for free. <laughs> you can't love your win condition because it costs zero. That's kind of scary. Uh, they'd either pay two, pay on one against aggressive decks. So everything in their deck costs mm -hmm. one. And then. There's a feature match uh, game I played against uh, Harry back in uh, Christmas yeah, yeah. where we unbound all the cards. And I played this and his whole deck cost one and on turn one I just tapped an extra oh. mana, played it, and then he looked at his whole hand of seven mana cards and then couldn't do anything. So the control, you said how in Yu-Gi-Oh you can't fix this. One of the things, not, I'm saying that magic is doing better yeah. because it's also magic's curse, but its resource system is based around mana. Mm -hmm. So the way this card is fixed is the fact that if you want to counter anything bigger than zero or one, mm -hmm. you have to put a lot of mana into it. You have to find a way to early on put like four mana to counter all the two two, okay. for example. This I assume you can pay always on play always on turn one, which is the problem. Turn one being like your opponent's turn because you yeah. set it, you activate it in your opponent's yeah, yeah. turn. Yeah. So this this will always be there early. While yeah. the other one, you have to find a way to cheat it. Yeah. If not, okay. the, your opponent has a chance to go under it. So maybe and I, I don't resource know how, system. You can. <laughs> I I don't know how possible this is in Yu Yo. Maybe you can't play it on your first turn or something. You can't set it on the first turn of the game. It would might, that fix it? It would, but it would also. Just make probably, it bad out of it existence. Isn't, probably. If it said this trap card cannot be activated until two turns after it was set, means that it would go back to your turn and you could activate it on your turn, but you wouldn't do that. You'd wait till the third turn, but by then, the game's probably over or but, you're in a game state where it doesn't really You know matter. what? That just means it's like 90% of the Yu-Gi-Oh Yu cards just useless cardboard that people have in their collections. At least you get to play with the king that doesn't know how to dab, <laughs> and you're just happy about that. Right? <laughs> He's like dabbing in like the weirdest <laughs> way. <Yeah. laughs> and his guards like, do we tell him? No, he'll <laughs> cut like, your nah. head off. So I have a question. In Magic, we have a lot of cards, that, uh, designs mm -hmm. that um, was just stopped using okay. things like protection because it just it was a feel bad. It means the card can't interact with anything of a color. If it had protection from mm -hmm. red, and you play a red deck. Well, good luck. You can't block. You can't deal damage yeah. to it. it. It just feels bad because it, you're just like, you there's no way I was ever card. winning this matchup. Yeah. Yes. So they stopped doing those. Okay. Is this a kind of design that Konami did at first because it's old and now it's like, yeah, okay, these were the younger days. We were green. We didn't know what we were doing. So Konami's really good with doing certain things like that, like draw effects. They realized, okay, no like resource system means that drawing and getting extra cards in your hands that you can just use, really good. We should probably make drawing a little harder to do, like limit the amount you can do. Like you've seen Pot of Desires? Yeah, uh, that's good. That card, banish 10, draw two. Really, really good. Um, I wish I could say that this is something that they also looked at and meant we should probably not do this anymore. But in, I think it was 2018, 2019, they printed a card called Mystic Mine. I uh, heard you've heard one. of Mystic Mine. It was actually the one we did with Yaman on the last iteration of the video, so check that out. Uh, it's pretty good. Mystic Mine is a card that if your opponent has more monsters than you, 
You play it, your field spells done, so it's continuous again, kind of like this. Your opponent, if they have more monsters than you, cannot activate monster effects. So it essentially shuts down another set of the game, one third of the cards of the game. There's another card very similar to Imperial Order uh, called Skill Drain. It's also a trap, it's also continuous. You pay 1,000 on life points once and you negate all monster effects on the field. Their effects can still be activated though. Kind of just like Imperial Order, where you can negate all of the uh, spells on the field, but you can still activate their effects. Mystic Mine has a bit of a harsher restriction where your opponent has to have more monsters than you, uh, and it's also kind of simultaneous. So if you have more monsters than them, you can't activate monster effects. Uh, so it goes back and forth, it becomes this game of, okay, how do I get rid of my monsters to make it so you do whatever? Yeah. It's like the chicken game. Yeah, it is quite like chicken game. Check that video out. It might be out in a, a round now, hopefully. Chicken but, bone. Uh, chicken, chicken bone. bone. It's something that they seem to have shied away from, but at the same time, I think they're trying to slow down the pace of the game and make it less mm -hmm. of a wombo combo thing. Oh, so, so then is this banned in the OCG? It is indeed also banned in the OCG. So this, you can't play this anywhere? You basically cannot play this anywhere, and this except is for on your wall. traditional format, which is something that we don't ever really see play, where there's no bannings, but every card that will be banned is limited to one instead. Mm. So it's, it's a very problematic card. I don't think there's really any way to actually errata this to make it able to become back into the game. If you guys can think of something that we have missed and leave, it in, know, the leave in the comments below, below. Uh, we read and we'll even like give it a shout out in the next one we, we do because I, I'm always interested in seeing how we can change So how do you design. fix Mystic Mine? Uh, ban it. <laughs> <laughs> play, oh, it's not banned play yet. More, no, it didn't get banned in the most uh, recent ban list. Uh, they're really going hard with that one. What do you genuinely think? Is this something that can be fixed? Because I don't think it can be. I I don't think you can. It's, it's on that like really weird fence. Yeah. That is it's very, very. It's it's a very narrow fence. It's not. It's, it's, there's not a lot of place to sit on and move it around. Yeah. I think you either make it way too good, or just completely unplayable. There is a very thin in between, like. And it, it's fine to just have these cards out. Something, some problems you can't fix. They tried. They tried to fix it. They couldn't do it. it so, work. and it's the only card that, that has ever happened to. But them. I must say, it is. Hilarious that it's written, this is not optional. Because they had to make sure that you knew. They were like, you have to pay the effect. That is, that is very it. funny to me. Thank you for coming on and Thank you for reviewing for this me. nightmare of a card. And if you guys like this, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell and comment down below if you want us to do this more and what cards you think we should show to other people that are historically a problem in Yu Gi Oh! Uh, until next time, I'll see you all. Bye. <laughs>